What's up, everybody, and welcome back to OpenStax Algebra and Trigonometry Chapter 7 Chapter Review Exercises. Let's do it. So for this one, it says convert the angle measures to degrees. So this is currently in radians. And this one you might want to have memorized, by the way. But the way you convert it is you always multiply for radians to degrees. You multiply by 180 over pi. By the way, if you were going the other way, you'd if you're, if you're going from degrees to radians, you'd multiply by pi over 180. But anyways, we have this. These cancel out. And then it's 180 divided by 4, which ends up being 45. So the answer is 45 degrees. Boom. Done. For this one, we're converting degrees to radians. And the way you do that is you throw the degree measure over one, and then you multiply by pi over 180. Now, if you were going from radians to degrees, you'd multiply by 180 over pi, but here we are. Now, the negative is gonna make the entire thing negative. Then we're left with negative 210 pi over 180. Then we can divide the top and bottom by 30, and we get negative seven pi over six. That's how you do it. So it says, find the length of an arc in a circle of a radius of 7 meters subtended by a central angle of 85. So let's say here is the length of the arc and the central angle in here is 85 degrees. So the formula for length of an arc is as follows. It's the central angle, 85, over the total amount of angles or degrees in a circle, which is 360. And then that times the circumference because really we're taking a piece of the circumference and the circumference is 2 times pi times the radius, which is seven. So here we have 85 over 360, that can reduce top and bottom, can be divided by five, and we get 17 over 72 times 14 pi. Now the 14 and the 72, they can simplify, you can divide them both by two, we get seven and we get 36, can't simplify anymore. So now you multiply across, seven times 17 is 119, and then we still have the pi over 36 and this is going to be in meters and now let's plug it into decimals to get the decimal approximation and here it rounds to 10.385 so we'll say approximately 10.385 meters boom done so for this question to find a coterminal angle between 0 and 360 i, I noticed that this is too big so when we're finding coterminal angles we have two options one we can add 360 two we can subtract 360 so because this is too big I know that my first step is actually gonna be subtract 360. And you can do it multiple times, okay? But let's see what we get when we subtract them, we actually get 60. Now, we have an angle measure that's between zero and 360. If we didn't, we could keep subtracting or whatever we need to do. But since we do, that's our coterminal angle. So 60 degrees is the answer, boom, done. For this one, to find a coterminal angle, we either are gonna add or subtract by two pi, okay? Because that's gonna give you, it's, it's like the same as 360 degrees, okay? So subtracting or adding by two pi, it's still gonna give you an equivalent angle in terms of being a coterminal angle. So since this is negative, it's below zero and two pi. So that means we need to add two pi. So negative 20 pi 11 plus two pi, but again, we need a common denominator of 11, so that'd be adding 22 pi over 11. And when we add these together, negative 20 plus 22 is positive two pi 11. That's how you do it, done. For this one, we're gonna draw this angle in standard position. So first of all, here's our origin, and this right here is gonna be the initial side. Now, when we're trying to draw an angle of 210 or whatever, we would usually go in this direction, which is counterclockwise, but here it's negative, so we're gonna go in the other direction, okay? We're gonna go clockwise. So let's find negative 210. So here is negative 90, here is negative 180. Now we only have another 30 to go. So maybe another negative 30 like so. So then negative 210 degrees would be this entire amount, and that's how you do it, boom, done. So for this one, we're gonna draw it in standard position. Now, five pi fourths, if that's tricky for you, you can always convert it to degrees. Um, the other way to, to think about it is, if you remember, pi fourths is basically like here, right? It's right in the middle. So it can be like one pi fourths, two pi fourths, three pi fourths, four pi fourths, and five pi fourths. So you can kind of do it that way. If you do want it to, to convert it to degrees, you multiply by 180 over pi. Those cancel out. Five times eight, 180 is 900. Divided by four gives you 
225. So sometimes that's easier to, to think about, right? 90, 180, and then another 45 would be 225. But either way, we're ending here. And again, we're going counterclockwise because it's positive like so, and then we end here. And this is the angle. So that's 225, boom, done. So this says find the linear speed of a point on the equator of the Earth if the Earth has a radius of 3,960 miles and the Earth rotates on its axis every 24 hours. So we're, we're trying to find this in miles per hour. So the first thing I need to know is like, what is the distance that the, you know, a point on the equator would travel in 24 hours in one day? Well, that would be the circumference of the earth, right? So circumference is two times pi times radius. And I know the radius of the earth, which is 3,960. And so now this will give me the total amount of miles traveled in a day. And then if I want this amount per hour, I divide by 24. So now let's plug this into Desmos and we'll see what we get. So we get 1036.7255, so that'll round up to 0.73. So we get approximately 1036.73 miles per hour, boom, done. So this one says use side lengths to calculate the following, and we're trying to take cosine of pi fourths. So what is pi fourths as an angle measure? It's the same as 45 degrees. Okay, you can figure that out from, from the conversion. So that means you're trying to find cosine of a 45 degree angle in this right triangle. And by the way, if this is 45, this is 45. So what do we have? We have a special right triangle. And if you remember, a special right triangle is going to have legs that are going to be equal. And then the hypotenuse is going to be the leg times square root of two. So now if you're trying to find cosine of 45, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, okay? So adjacent over hypotenuse. So whatever X is, it's gonna cancel out. So we're one over rad two. Now we're just gonna rationalize the denominator by multiplying basically by itself, rad two over rad two. And then we get rad two, and then rad two times itself is just two. So that's how you do it, boom. So this one says take tangent of pi over six. By the way, pi six is equivalent to 30 degrees. So they're really saying, hey, take tangent of 30 degrees. And when you have 30 degrees in a right triangle, you're making a special right triangle of a 30, 60, 90. So that's pretty cool. And with a 30, 60, 90, the ratios are, if this side is X, the larger leg is X rad three, and then the hypotenuse is double the small leg, which is two X. So now if I wanna take tangent of pi six, Tangent of 30 is the same thing, which is opposite over adjacent. So it's x over x rad 3. The x's cancel out, we get 1 over rad 3. Multiply by rad 3 over rad 3 to rationalize the denominator, because rad 3 times itself is 3. On top, we have square root 3. That's how you do it. Done. So for this question, it's important to recognize that cosecant and secant have a similar relationship to sine and cosine and the relationship between sine and cosine is that sine of an angle is equal to cosine of the complement of that angle assuming x is a q okay and so it's going to be the same thing with cosecant and secant so what is complementary to 18 well it would be 90 minus 18 which would be 72 so the answer to this question is cosecant of 18 equals secant of 72 72 is the winner done so for this one, they give us this information, which is that B, which is opposite big B, is going to be 6, and then tangent of A, which is this angle, is 5 over 9. So what we, and by the way, ta uh, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we can rewrite this as tangent of A is opposite over adjacent, which is A over 6. But I also know that tangent of A equals 5. 5 over 9. So look at this. Now we got a nice little proportion we can solve for A. So let's cross multiply. We get 30 equals 9A. Divide both sides by 9. And we get 30 over 9 equals A. We divide top and bottom by 3 and you get 10 over 3. So A is 10 thirds. And now to get C, we can use a little Pythagorean's theorem. So we get the little leg, 10 over 3 squared, plus the medium leg, which is 6 squared equals the hypotenuse C squared. That's what we're trying to find. So this becomes 100 over 9 plus 36 equals C squared. Coming over here, let's get common denominators. So we got 100 over 9 plus 36 times 9, that's 324 over 9. You add those together, you get 424 over 9 equals c squared. Take the square root of both sides, and you get square root of 9 is 3. And then for 424, it's not a perfect square, but we can simplify, okay? 
So 424 is really 4 times 106. And then you can take the square root of 4. That's a perfect square, which is 2. And then there's nothing out of 106 that we can pull out and take a square root of. So that says trap inside. So we have the hypotenuse, which is 2 square root 106 over 3. And then we have the other leg, which is 10 thirds. That's how you do it. So this question says to find tangent of B, where tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. So opposite of B is 6. Adjacent of B is 11. And obviously, we're not talking about the hypotenuse, right? Adjacent leg. So that's 11. That's how you do it. Done. Now, for a question like this, we could use trigonometry, but we actually don't need to because this is a nice, perfect special right triangle, which is a 30, 60, 90, right? If that's 30, that has to be 60. That has to be 90 because of the, the symbol there. So the cool thing here is if I already know the hypotenuse, in a 30, 60, 90, the little leg opposite 30 is half the hypotenuse, which means B equals half of 5, which is 2.5. I can also write that as 5 over 2. Now, A, okay, if I know the little leg, A, which is the medium leg, is the little leg 5 over 2 times radical 3. So I can say 5 over 2 times rad 3. So these are your two answers for B and A. Boom. The angle of elevation to the top of a building in Baltimore is found to be four degrees from the ground at a distance of one mile from the base of the building. So use it for information to find the height of the building. So here's my little diagram. And the reason why I wrote one mile as 5,280 feet is because they give the answer in the back of the book in feet for the height of the building. So of course we need this to be in feet as well. Now we're gonna use a little trigonometry and the question is which trigonometric function are we gonna use to solve for this unknown height? Well. I, I've, the opposite of 4 is what I'm trying to solve for, and the adjacent is what we know. So I think tangent makes sense, opposite over adjacent. So tangent of 4 equals opposite over adjacent, which is 5280. Then I'm going to solve for x by multiplying both sides by 5280. And now let's plug it into Desmos. And I make sure I'm in degrees mode. And here we get 369.21. So we'll say 369.2136 feet. That's the height of the building. Done. So here it says use the unit circle to find cosine of pi over 4. So the way we do that is we find pi over 4 on the unit circle and recognize that cosine lines up with the x value of that corresponding coordinate. So cosine of pi over 4, therefore, is positive rad 2 over 2. Boom. Done. So this one says state the reference angle for 300 degrees. So if we start here at 300, we're going around, 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 all the way up to 300, which is right here, right? And that's labeled on the unit circle. So the reference angle then is this remaining distance, this shortest distance by, by degrees up to the x axis right so if we're at 300 to go back up to 360 it would be 60 degrees for the reference angle so 60 degrees boom done so this one says compute cosine of 330 so we're going to go to the unit circle and i see 330 right here and again cosine is just the x value of that coordinate right so cosine of 330 is positive square root 3 over 2 boom done so this one says state the domain of the sine and cosine function. So here's the thing, right? We can we can take inputs as angles. So you might say like sine of 30, sine of 120, sine of 240, okay? And we're talking about degrees. The same can be said for cosine. But the thing is there's no limitation because we have our coterminal angles. I can say sine of 2,400. I can say sine of 10 million, okay? Those are still all going to evaluate, which means that the domain of sine and cosine for both are all real numbers, or we can say an interval notation, negative infinity to infinity. That's how you do it. Done. So this question has to evaluate cosine of pi over 6 radians. So pi over 6 occurs right here on the unit circle, and cosine means we're going to take the corresponding x value of that coordinate. So cosine of pi over 6 is rad 3 over 2. Boom. Done. So 41 says find cosecant of pi over 3, right? So cosecant, by the way, is the inverse for sine. So if I'm going to find uh, cosecant of pi over 3, first let's find sine of pi thirds, okay? So sine of pi thirds, we find pi thirds here. Sine is the y value, which is rad 3 over 2. Well, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So it's going to be the opposite of this, which is 2, rad th 2 over rad 3, meaning reciprocal by opposite. And then I just need to rationalize the denominator. So we're going to multiply by rad 3 over rad 3. That's going to give me 2 rad 3 on top. Rad 3 times itself is just going to give me 3. So that's how you do it. Done. 
So for this one, it says use reference angles to evaluate this. And now, so what is the reference angle, right? So first of all, we have to know, does 11 pi thirds even exist on the unit circle? It does not. So I'm gonna find a coterminal angle that's on this unit circle so we can calculate this reference angle. So I'm gonna subtract by two pi. And since we have a denominator of three, two pi would be six pi over three, okay? And we subtract that and we get five pi thirds. So this is on the unit circle right here. And now we can calculate the reference angle, which is this distance up to the x-axis. So this is five pi thirds, that's uh, six pi thirds is up here, or two pi. So the difference is pi thirds. So now we can take the, the reference angle secant of that pi thirds, okay? So here's pi thirds. Secant is the inverse, or the, the output will be the reciprocal of cosine. So it's like, what is cosine of pi thirds? It's the x value, which is one half. What's the reciprocal of one half? Two. Last but not least, we, we were in the fourth quadrant. Is cosine and secant, are they positive in the fourth quadrant? Yes, they are. So we can just leave the sign as is. Just to clarify, we didn't actually need that reference angle. We could have taken this coterminal of five pi thirds and been like, okay, it, the, the secant value is the reciprocal of this x value right there. So that would have been enough, but just wanted to clarify that that's how you do it. Done. If secant of t is negative 2.5, what is neg secant of negative t? So this comes back to the properties of symmetry for cosine, because cosine and secant, they're inverses, so they have the same symmetry properties. Well, I know that cosine of negative t, because cosine is an even function, cosine of negative t is just equal to cosine of regular t. It doesn't, it doesn't change anything. So the same is true for secant. So since secant of t is negative 2.5, secant of negative t is the exact same, Therefore, it's negative 2.5 as well. Boom, done. So for this one, it says tangent of t is one third. Find tangent of t minus pi. Now, if you'll recall, the period of tangent is pi. So if I'm taking an angle and I'm subtracting pi from it, I'm that, that's the amount of the period. So I'm coming right back to the exact same value in just in a different period, meaning it's going to be the exact same right? Tangent of t minus pi is the same as tangent of t minus 2 pi minus 3 pi, as the, which is the same as tangent of t. So again, if it's one third for that, tangent of t minus pi is also one third. Boom. Done. So this question says, which trigonometric functions are even? And in a trigonometric function that's even has the property of when you plug in negative x, it's the same as plugging in regular x, okay? And there's only uh, one main trigonometric function, but also its inverse is even, and that is cosine. Okay, because cosine of negative x equals just cosine of regular x. So the two functions are cosine and the inverse of cosine, which is secant. So those are your two even functions. Boom, done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please click that like button. If you want to see more from the Scalar Learning channel, make sure to click subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining, and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.